Hey cats, Ed Puma Grip Bud here, YouTube's only true shoe savant. I've got a roundup of four shoes for you today on the yay or nay. They're soon to be released, maybe future releases. Sometimes I'm going to be speculating a little bit here about these shoes, but it's not me saying that they're fantastic or they're trash. It's just whether I might pick them up for review or not and my reasons why. It could be that I might leave them to collect dust on the virtual shelves or it might be that there's another shoe tuber out there that will do them a bit more justice. You know, only after a few dates when you got the shoe on foot does the true personality shine through. It's yay or nay time, good people. Let's get to it. you for joining me here on my strange little alcove of YouTube. I do appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't done so yet, do help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell for notifications. It really helps the channel out there if you give this video a thumbs up like and share the video with your running buddies. Danke schön. Four shoes today on the A1A. Let's get to it. Shoe number one. There's a whole volley of Adidas shoes set to launch in 2023. There's some models that people really, really enjoy, and there's some quite big updates actually on those, so let's have a quick look. The Adios 8 here looks to have been finely tuned by the three stripe shoe smiths. By finely tuned, I basically mean they're adding loads of Light Strike Pro into the mix. It's kind of like when you make a cookie and you just put too much chocolate mixture in there but it's a good thing. You know what I'm talking about. With all that extra Light Strike Pro up front, I'm expecting a more forgiving yet propulsive ride from that special foam. It's one of those foams that gets better and better the more and more you use it, which is practically the reverse of all of the others. There's only some limited images here from the Instagrammers running northwest, so thank you for that. It does show a sleek design though, a bit of an upper change too. I don't think it looks a million miles actually from the Adios Pro 3 upper or the one that's used on the Takumi Sen 9. A longer flare to the heel in the rear of the shoe and much more Light Strike Pro filling the entire mid to forefoot this time round. They're certainly not scrimping. I can't tell for 100% here, but it doesn't look like the shoe's got those dreadful lace loops that Adidas shoes on a few of their models. I don't want those on this shoe. Please leave them off there, Adidas. Kind of like the Adios series, really. A more reasonable stack. It's not sort of maxed out or anything. Quite good for daily or sort of high-speed use. I think it brings the Adios 8 a little bit closer to the Takumi Sen. That's a good thing in my book, a nice sleek and versatile shoe is what we all want. I do hope they keep the price around that £120 as well. That's a good sort of price point, I think, for this shoe. I doubt it though, because things just keep going that way at the moment, which is bad news, you know. Don't go down the supermarket unless you like a horror show. Not sure why they've included that heel flare there. It doesn't really feel like it's needed on the Adios series. It's always been quite a sort of basic shoe. You just sort of put your foot into it and tie it up and run. Yeah. Perhaps the extra Light Strike Pro will give us a small weight reduction. That would be splendid. Either way, it's a big yay for me on this superb shoe. I really like the Adios line and I think I'm going to like the Adios 8. Shoe 2. Okay, one I didn't bother picking up in the last iteration, that's the Boston 11. We got a picture here of the Boston 12 and they've got more and more Light Strike Pro on it. So that's got to be a good thing, right? Thanks again to Running Northwest for their picture here. Go and follow them on Instagram, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. A new upper by all accounts, it appears to be a little less thick than the last couple of versions. That Boston 10 was a big waste of time for me. It really put me off the series. I really enjoyed the 9, but the 10 was just completely different. A real clunker. It got a little bit better, I suppose, after about 50 miles, but not that much. I mean, how many miles do you want to run in a shoe before it actually feels good? It's kind of like buying a guitar that feels terrible and expecting it to feel better after like... 50 gigs. So what are this beast then, the Boston 12? It looks like they've certainly increased the amount of Light Strike Pro there. Maybe it'll be a little bit more forgiving out the box. I wonder if those energy rods will be connected up as they are in the Adios Pro 3, eliminating that very rigid heel plate that they had in that Boston 10 and 11. I shall have to get the saw out and investigate. I was a bit confused with the Light Strike Pro usage in the Boston 10. I hope they've changed it up this time. There really wasn't actually that much of the Pro that stretched back into the heel. It looked like it kind of cups around the base of the foot, but 
it didn't really just kind of on the sides and it's not really doing anybody any favors there is it i also hope that this shoe is lighter than the last one i think it was about 350 grams or something but i just rather wear a more compressive and forgiving shoe like the invincible run over the boston as such if we've got slightly softer foam and a less coffin like upper I'm not entirely sure I can say yay because the price is just so high. I think it's one website suggesting it's going to be £170. Oh, I'm out if that's the cost here. Weight, upper fit, price. Yeah, it's a nay for me on the Boston 12. It's just not saying that fills me with any sort of excitement really. Not sure we need that. Just bring back the old Boston. Basically the adios. Shoe 3. We're on to a Saucony Speedster now. The Endorphin Pro 4. Now, quickly look at the shoe, right? Tell me what you see. It doesn't half look like a swoosh on the side of it, doesn't it? Yeah, have another look. Certainly close, isn't it? So we've got a Power Run HG midsole this time. This is the same foam that we've got on the Endorphin Elite. I'm yet to try that shoe out. I really hope I can in the very near future. It's kind of weird they don't call the Speed the Endorphin Semi Pro. Kind of fits better, I think. Clearly a 14 millimeter max shoe here with perhaps even more up front. The upper looks like a continuation of the material seen in the Dorfin Pro 3 but with the addition of some lovely soft suede-like parts. Not quite as striking a look as these Air Max 1 Pecans though. I think these are quite possibly one of the best I've seen in a long time. Those colours are just absolutely fantastic and the, the soft suede, wow. If you do want a review of those, I'll do a sort of on-foot, you know, comfort review if you fancy it. Let me know in the comments. My daughter's actually suggested that I do a sort of top sneakers review. You know, my top five shoes that are not running shoes, basically. And normally when she comes up with an idea, most of you enjoy it. So let me know if you want that one too. Lace loops here as per our Pro 3. But the most striking element here is the heavily cut out and weight relieved midsole setup. That heel, we've got loads of slices removed out of it. Maybe that assists in the compression of the foam. I've yet to try out that Endorphin Elite, maybe someday, but the red tick on the side of the shoe sure does look like a swoosh. I can't help but think Nike are going to have a bit of a word about that, where it's crossing the upper through to the midsole, that bottom line as well. It really does look like the proto version of the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. I'm assuming using this foam is going to make the Endorphin Pro 4 even lighter. Now do consider that the 3 was on par really for me with that Vaporfly release. One can only hope maybe it will be even lighter than that again, who knows? Big up the Protos of the Gram Instagram page. They, they do state very much this is a prototype shoe. So maybe the actual official release when we finally get it will be quite a bit different. A yay whenever this shoe releases. I mean, it could be months and months away yet. It's a must try for me though, considering the strides that Saucony have made over the last three years. Before we get to shoe four, just a bit of a thanks for all the subscribers and the members of the channel sorry for the lack of videos over the last few days i've been looking after my son and that's a you know a full-time job <laughs> gotta spend time with my son and my daughter you know those times drift away very quickly they grow up and they move forward and you want to try and catch those memories and those times with the best possible recording medium and that isn't a gopro or a phone that is the eyes and the mind shoe four Last one up today, an intriguing new model from Puma. A shoe that has some more subtle stability elements, but which don't feel overtly in your face by the looks of it. There's certainly a hint of control there though in this new model. I think the Forever Run Nitro from Puma could be the shoe you're looking for if you require that. Now to me, this has got some Vomero 16 vibes all about it, and here's why. The midsole is made up of two different versions of Puma's nitrogen infused foam, a softer core and a slightly firmer shell complete with a more pronounced outer heel counter. That's why I think this has got Vomero 16 written on it. Now that Nike shoe was certainly one of my favorites over the last few years. Not a overtly weighty sort of vibe to it, but I think the Forever Run Nitro could fit into that category. We got standard Puma grip on the outsole here. I think this could be a matchup for the likes of the Infinity Run, if that's a shoe of note for you. Maybe offering a ride with a more consistent midsole, yet, yeah lacking the increased weight that we see in shoes like the SC Trainer 
the Nimbus 25 or the Invincible Run 3. Some of those shoes undoubtedly feel quite weighty on foot, especially if you're a more slender sort of individual. I mean, I kind of fit into that category though, depending on how much pizza consumption has been occurring. These are also going to come in a little bit lower in price as well than some of those other shoes, around about the £140 mark. That's no doubt going to be alluring to some runners. Now, one very interesting thing about this shoe is the supplied insole. A little bit different to what you've seen in the past. It has a pad under the midfoot area, which is once again to boost the stability and support offered by the Forever Run, and perhaps making distance running a possibility for some who suffer with some sort of pain or some sort of recurring injury. Certainly the design here speaks to me in terms of innovation. It's just something a little bit different to what we've seen from loads of other brands. All trying to sort of copy each other here. Puma are doing something a little bit different. As such, I think it's probably a cool one to try out. There's lots of people out there that contact me that have certain issues and this seems to have a few things built in that may get around some of those problems. It's a yay for me for the Puma Forever Run Nitro. I think this one launches round about the start of March, so hopefully I can get a review out for you then. That's all four shoes for today in the yay or nay. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on these down in the comments. A very quick musical interlude for you. By chance, I stumbled back upon the wonderful Somewhere in My Heart by Aztec Camera the other day. What a great track. I mean, it's got some very 80s sounding drums. They almost sound like a drum machine, I suppose. Quite a synthesized sort of backing there, but I don't think you can doubt the quality of the track that lies underneath all of that sort of candy coated production. Almost no guitar on there. I think it's some like strummed acoustic guitar. Aside from the dynamite solo from Roddy Frame, it was a massive hit at the time. I think it still stands up to the test of time now. Worth checking out. It's probably like an Aztec camera best of. Loads of great tracks. Very underrated singer and songwriter, Roddy Frame. Go and check it out, guys. Aztec camera, the best of. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.